Those of you that know me know that I'm passionate about the fact that websites should evolve over time rather than going through periodic boom-bust redesigns that are massively wasteful. However, convincing management of that can be much, much harder. And even when we manage it, even when management finally come to the belief that you need to invest in your website on an ongoing basis, there's still a huge amount of pressure on the internal web teams to deliver, to prove that they are bringing a return on investment in. And that means that the web teams need to be run in the most productive, efficient, best way possible in order to get the results because the pressure is on. So what I want to do in this little video is share with you seven techniques, seven things you can do to make your team as efficient as possible, to get the best results possible that you can then take back to management and uh, show them that you know what you're doing. And the whole thing really begins and pretty much ends, truthfully, on users and user tasks getting users on board. You see, the problem is when you've got an internal web team, suddenly all these stakeholders will come out of the woodwork. Suddenly there's time and money and people to do stuff on the website. And so you'll get bombarded with ideas. Oh, we need to do this. We need that on the home page. We need an about us page. We need this, that and the other. And they'll come to you with all of these ideas and it's easy to end up spending your whole life pleasing internal stakeholders and not actually meeting the needs of end users. So we need to refocus things on the end user and how do we do that? Well, anybody that comes to you with an idea of something they want doing on the website, get them to frame it in terms of a task that the user is doing. So I use something called user stories that, set, that define the person, the task they're trying to complete and their ultimate goal. So let's say, for example, it was a charity website. On a charity website, you might have a teenager come along who's on a gap year. And that teenager might have a task of finding out about volunteering opportunities with your charity. The ultimate goal was so that he can have a year out and he can spend that volunteering and learning. So with that context in mind, that then informs the content that you produce on the website. So instead of an internal stakeholder coming along and saying, I want a volunteering section, he has to come along and describe the use case that he's talking about. That puts you in control of the solution and how you solve it, and it ensures that you remain focused on the user at all times. So that's my first tip. The second technique for being as effective as possible in your web team is to understand the business challenges. Because although it's important to meet users' needs, that's not the whole equation, is it? Ultimately, your website exists to profit the business so that the business succeeds. So the way that I go about doing that is I think in terms of problems. What problems are your digital assets, you know, what problems are they solving? And I write a list of those, and those become a measure against which I measure requests coming in for the website. So if somebody comes along saying, we need an About Us page, you can look at your set of problems and going, does this actually in any way solve any of the problems that we've got listed? If it does, go ahead and do it. If it doesn't, then I would challenge it. Now, that list of problems will evolve and change over time, but it's a really valuable measure to decide what you should be doing and what you should be prioritizing it. Next up is monitor everything. You need to become obsessed with the idea of monitoring, monitoring what users are doing, because this has a couple of really good results if you do this regularly. First of all, you can prove to management that what you're doing is successful because you've got hard numbers to back it up. But secondly, monitoring should inform the work you're doing to make your website more effective. For example, if by monitoring you discover that a lot of users are uh, dropping out of, uh, of the website at a particular point, then you can invest time and energy into sorting that part of the website. Not all of the things that you do by any means should be driven by other stakeholders coming to you going, I want this, I want that. Most of what you do should be driven by your analytics and what those are telling you. 
As a kind of side point to that, I'd also suggest that you really get into multivariant testing if you're not already. Testing your website, testing multiple versions of doing things in slightly different ways. If we change that call to action button from red to green, does it improve conversion rate? You need an ongoing program of multivariant testing. And if you haven't got that, get it, get started. I recommend using a tool called Optimizely to help you with that. My fourth technique or tip is to have a set of guiding principles. I've already talked, haven't I, about how you can measure the incoming suggestions against your business problems that you're trying to solve, but you can also measure them against some guiding principles. These are like a framework within which you operate. Now, what those guiding principles are is entirely up to you and every website may, uh, may be slightly different. But let's say, for example, one of your guiding principles was we always put customer satisfaction before short term monetary gain. That then shapes what you do on the website. It shapes the kind of things that you'll decide to develop and and. And when stakeholders come to you with something that doesn't sit comfortably within that, then you can reject it because it's against your guiding principles. Another really important thing that you must do um, as somebody running an internal web team is not work in isolation. You have to collaborate. It's very easy as a web team to go off and do your own digital thing over here while the rest of the organization carries on over here. But that is such a mistake and you must avoid it. There are two reasons why that is such an enormous mistake. Reason number one is because user experiences are not limited to the digital world. Yes, somebody might use your mobile app or might use your website, but they could just as easily go into a retail store or pick up the phone. All of those things are part of the customer journey and you need to look at it in its entirety. And that means collaborating really closely with the people that are responsible for the call center or for the retail store. Secondly, and related to that, is that Different people in the organization have expertise that you don't have but will need in order to provide a great solution. You will need marketing people in order to make your website work properly. But finally, and probably most importantly on that point, is the fact that ultimately our job as web designers in an internal web team is to educate our organizations to the point where you're redundant, where you're not needed anymore, where digital is ubiquitous like electricity. And that means that you have to be actively engaging with your colleagues. Only then can they become as knowledgeable as you about digital and all things um, web related. So I suggest taking a leaf out of Agile in this particular instance. One of the principles of Agile is that your stakeholders are a part of your team. Too many web teams I encounter refer to internal clients, that the stakeholder is a client, but actually you need to stop thinking of them like that. You need to think of them as a team member, somebody you work alongside with. That is absolutely crucial for success. I also want to suggest that you need to take time to step back from your projects every now and again and, and just consolidate your thinking. The trouble is, is that we get so involved in the day-to-day nitty-gritty of working on a website that we often lose the bigger picture. And it can be very difficult to, to look at the broader view when you're just bombarded with stuff all of the time. When there's pressure on you to perform, you might think you don't have time to step back. But the truth is you don't have the time not to. It's too important. From time to time, you have to step back and look at things holistically as a whole. Only then will you really spot those glaring errors that you can miss when you're working on things all the time. Another part of that is you need time to learn too, time to experiment, time to try out new techniques. Because if you don't, your skill set will atrophy and your website will suffer. It's so important to stay up to date. All of that kind of brings me on to the very last point I want to touch on in this video, which is that you need an outside perspective. 
When you're working on something all of the time, you end up not being able to see the wood for the trees. It's very hard to kind of maintain a fresh perspective on things. So even if you do all of your design and development work in house, I would encourage you to still have an external agency on your books. Somebody that you can go to every now and again and ask for a fresh perspective. Now that might just be getting them to do an expert review once a year or something like that. That doesn't need to be a big or expensive thing. Headscape do expert reviews for our clients all the time and they only take a couple of days to complete. Another option would be to have almost a non-executive team member, someone that sits outside of the organization but effectively is part of your team and you're talking to them maybe once a month, maybe even more often about what it is that you're doing so that that person can challenge you about why you're doing what you're doing, hold you accountable for the things that you said you would do. But having that outside opinion is absolutely crucial and makes an enormous difference. I could go on. There's so much more I could talk about in this subject. And in fact, you could write an entire book about how to get the most out of internal web teams. But hopefully what I've said gives you enough to start with, enough to be able to work as efficiently and effectively as possible so that management see your successes, see your progress, and are willing to invest more in the long-term success of your digital strategy.